So you wanna learn how to make some doors in Unreal. So I'm gonna teach you guys just two really dirt simple ways to make two different types. One, which is a kind of bigger sci-fi door that just opens up when we walk up. And when we walk away, it goes down. And the normal door that opens up, you can see if we walk away, it closes. And if we go through, the magic on this one is it opens the other way. Pretty fancy, right? So if you find this uh, video useful, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, helps the YouTube algorithm and then more videos like this can be made. So let's get into it. So first example door. Um, if you don't know how to make blueprints, uh, really like two seconds come in your content, blueprint class. So we're not gonna set that up. We're gonna try to keep it pretty fast today. But you can see this door is a blueprint, which if you were to do it, you do blueprint class and you'd make it of a class actor. And then what you would do is, I'm gonna come in here. You can see I got my big old sweet sci-fi door and it's made out of a few things. A root node, which you usually get for default, the door itself, a trigger volume, and then like the wall that goes around it, okay? Which is kind of optional. Um, the trigger volume here, you're like, oh no, I can't find that. When you, when you add these components, you're gonna add them, the door and the door around it as static mesh components. And then the thing that the player walks into, which is gonna be really crucial for our door, if you scroll down, you're gonna see a thing called a collision um, or a box collision. Um, I just renamed mine to trigger, okay? So you don't need to do that. Let's take a look at the graph and show you what's going on. So we're gonna open up the event graph and at a super high level level, let's just talk about what's happening. So let's remember we have the door, we have the outside of the door and we have this box thing, okay? What we do is we take that box thing. If you right click on these, you can do what's called an add an event. These are all the type of things that can happen or like kind of like think about um, your birthday, right? Just oh my God, I can't believe what's happening. But there's like a component being overlapped, okay? These are the two nodes you're gonna want to add to your graph. So the top one is begin and this one's end. So with this, let me make this bigger for you guys, make it a little easier. I'm gonna check to see if something walked in. If that other thing is an actor, which like 99% of things in Unreal are, I wanna make sure that the thing that walked in wasn't just like a cube or something that like flew across the map like a box. I wanna make sure it's of a type character, which is kind of like a parent class. If it is of type character, I want you to do this little animation over time, you're right? And then you're gonna set the relative location of the door itself. So this door mesh, okay? So you might be asking, well, how does it know how I want my door to go? The time, the speed, the distance. So if you open up this timeline, I'll show you what's going on here. So I had added a vector component. We don't necessarily need to do that, but I'll show you why I did it. So if you come in here, I'll, I'll make a new one with you just to show you how this works. So you would click this add a vector track. You would name it something like um, door uh, moving up or whatever. So you can see I mine's called door moving here originally. You would figure out which axes your door goes up on. So if I go in the viewport here, click on this, you see it goes up on the Z. Come back to my timeline. Look, see this blue line? See how it was blue over here in the bottom corner? That's what you're looking for, okay? So if I just lock these other two axes and I just have my Z axis, you right click on it, you add a, co a point, you right click on it, you add a point, okay? This first one, you click on it, left click on it, you type in zero, you type in zero. And on the second one, what you do is you say, how long do you think you, do you want the door to take to open? Let's just say two seconds. And then how many units up in the world does the door need to go? So if I come over here and I drag my door up, hey look, 305 units. Hey look, 410. So imagine this little bit of gap. I can just control Z to undo. I go back to my timeline. I click on my second little node over here, my little node, type in 410, come back out. This now is technically gonna drive that to 410. You can see that this is my original one. This is the one we just made together. So if I hook this bad boy up, compile, save, hit play, you're gonna see when I walk into it, it's gonna take two whole seconds and go to the position that we defined. Pretty cool. All right, let's move on to our little advanced weird door, okay? How does this work? Well, what this does is it checks to see which way the character is facing 
So that way it opens the appropriate direction when we walk into it. Let's take a look at that one. So let's come over and again, it's a blueprint. You can make one. I'm gonna click the little edit button to get in here. Let's look how it's made. Again, looks pretty similar, right? Root node, trigger volume, door, and door frame. Again, trigger volumes are called collisions. What we do from here, you go into the event graph, you're gonna see the same thing I did with the trigger volume, where I right clicked, added event, did on component begin and end, which means I walked in and I walked out. I wanna make sure I'm the character. If I am a character, I wanna get my forward axis. What is a forward axis? Forward axis is always this red axis. So if this object rotated or whatever, it's always gonna be the, the X axis relative to the scene. So as this, as this door rotates, see how that red arrow is pointing that way? If it's going this way, that's its forward, at, um, forward vector. That's the easiest way to think about it. You might be going, why do I care? Well, if I know my character's direction and I know the direction of my entire door, which is like this root component, right? I'm comparing these two in what's called a dot operation or a dot product. Um, the easiest way to think about it is that this compares two vectors and it'll return a value of one if they're going the same direction, negative one if they're going opposite, and zero if they're uh, perpendicular. And then kind of like all the values in between. So what I can do is I got like this, I can tell if, again, they're, if they're pointing the same direction, so if I took this door and I took this cube and I got them in the same direction, see how that's pointing that direction, that's pointing out what direction? Your dot product would be one. If I spun this around 180 degrees and did this, see how it's pointing that way and it's pointing the opposite, you'd get a value of negative one out of this. And if my if, if this was my character and it was like that and this, they're perpendicular, right? They're not, or they're, uh, yeah. You would see, you get a value of zero. Hopefully that makes sense. It takes a little bit, but you'll get it. This will then check to see what that value is. If it's greater than or equal to zero, set this to be true. If not, set it to the opposite. Those are the two values I care about. So I did this compare. I have a timeline. In this timeline, what's different, last time we set um, our total length to be uh, the time we wanted the animation to take. And we also set the second node to be the extents. So I wanted to do, move the door up 400 units. Another way to do this is just what's called like normalized time. So this is just the first node is still just zero, 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 right? And the second node is the amount of time you want it to take, but you always make it one. And if you're new to like normalizing stuff, I'll explain. So we basically are starting to now, we've agreed the direction that we're facing. And so based on if I'm facing uh, the door on one side or I'm facing the door on the other side, I'm gonna get one of two values. I'm gonna get a yes or a no. Am I facing the front of the door or the back of the door? And I'm gonna do one of two things, two different set rotations, and I'm gonna run what's called a linear interpolate. So I'm gonna lerp from one value to another value. I'm gonna lerp from one value to another value. So again, imagine, imagine this value when it starts is at zero. By the time it's done, it's at one. And, and it takes a half a second to do it. So what does that mean? Coming out of here, this value starts at zero, this value ends at one. So this value will map 90 to 180 to that. So in a half a second, this value will go 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, et cetera, et cetera, until it gets to 180. And all the while, it's setting the uh, rotation axes of um, the door mesh. Now, if, it's this, if you don't see these things, the real quick set, set relative, um, sorry, not scale, blah, set, relative rotation. Um, if you ever see like a rotator or something like that, you can always uh, right click on it and just split the pins because we only wanna influence the one. It just makes everything easier. So if you're confused why this looks like that and you didn't see it originally, that's why, just right click on it. Okay, so you might be asking me like, wh why does it say 90 and 180 and why does it say 90 and zero? Well, if we go into our scene and take a look at our door, you'll see that if I click on the door, it starts at a rotation of 90. This isn't right, you might be zero, it's okay. But you can figure out what you needed to rotate to by just grabbing this value and rotating it. So you see it started at 90 and it needed to go to um, 180. Or if it starts at 90, it might need to go to zero. So 
if you look at my two values here, oh look, one of them goes from 90 to zero, or zero to 90, and the other one goes from 90, which is its starting place, to 180. Perfect. So that gives us our two different swings from zero, from 90 to zero and from 90 to 180, okay? And that's how it's picking. It's picking by saying, compare the thing, play this little ranged value that's normalized, and then pick which set relative we want to do, okay? And then when you walk out, it's all gonna do is gonna play everything in reverse. So you can see here, I have the on component end overlap, which was the trigger volume, again, at event, end overlap. We make sure you're a character, we wait half a second so that it doesn't just crush you. We plug it into the reverse of the timeline. This updates everything. This value is now going not going from zero to one, it's not going from one to zero. And it's just flipping, in a sense, the value. So if it was at 90 to 180, now it's at 180, it goes back to 90. So everything works pretty well. So hopefully this video explains a little bit about how to make some just quick and dirty doors, how to get things to work. Um, if you like this, remember to like and hit the subscribe button or leave a comment that just says that, um, yeah, you wish I covered like using a button or something. If that sounds interesting to you, um, leave a comment and we can cover that in another video. So enjoy your evening, day, night, whatever it is for you, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.